Ariana Connor Losi and Lupita Godinez. If there's one thing I love about Lupi is that despite being a Mexican-born fighter, she holds her Canadian roots pretty high. And she really has been kind of one of the female fighters that Canadian fans have been able to cling to for the last little bit. I mean, man, what can you say about her? The run that she had during the pandemic put her on the mainstream map for MMA. And I think that when you look at the people that she's been able to take on, some of the close losses, but some of the big wins, I mean, very good mix of legends like Penne and up-and-coming fighters like Luana Carolina. In this fight, you kind of want to give her that Mexican edge, right? The durability, the cardio. I mean, if she's able to avoid the big groundwork and the big strikes from Ariane early in the fight, I think that the cardio should hold up here. The big matchup for me in this fight is the 62% takedown accuracy for Carnalosi versus Lupi's 77% takedown defense. I do think that Ariane is going to be strong enough to hold Lupita down if she gets there. But the cool thing about Lupi is that she's so active off her back. And she also has such a good grappling game where she likes to use the wrestling. Get on top. Use some ground and pound. Find those submissions. So in terms of a stylistic matchup, this fight's really, really close. And I'm finding it very difficult to predict a winner. But there's something about Ariane's skill set that always makes me think that she's able to stay in fights. And the big thing for me here is the power, the strength. I'm just really curious how much Lupi's going to be able to deal with that. We've seen her take some serious beatings and still keep her game. I, I think that that's the best part about Lupi's um, kind of game plan going into fights is that she's able to kind of keep herself in the fight, whether it's standing or on the ground. And so even when she loses, it's very close. So for Carnalosi, I just want to see her do some real damage, get some of that... Um, big power off of her chest in the early parts of the fight because i think from a technical striking perspective loopy should have a pretty good let's not use the word advantage but i think that she's going to have a bit of an experience factor there where like a lot of like let's call them pillow shots but things that get you points things that help you win rounds i think loopy's really good at that and so for ariani it's like yeah once the power subsides and you got to be smarter where can she take the fight a lot of people pointed out <clears throat> you know even the Nunez fight, it took her some time to really find an area where she was able to finish. And that was a fighter that struggled so much on the ground for that one. So when you look at the way Ariane has fought in the past, it's something to really think about when, when you think about stylistic fights, right? The loss to Angela Hill. Again, you took on one of the best fighters when it comes to, you know, gradual um, confidence and getting better as the fight moves on. And you lost it via cut. So, you know, Angela Hill and Ariane, I think, were looking really good in that fight. It was very competitive. And then we start to see Carter Losey really take off in the UFC. She's got two straight finishes now after uh, that short notice debut against Angela Hill. And I'll be honest, man, in this fight, I am leaning Ariane just a little bit because I think that there's a cardio factor that allows her to keep that power factor there. And, and for Loopy, when you think about some of the losses that she's taken, unfortunately for me, it's just... The close fights, unless you can really finish someone on the ground, is where I'm curious to see if she can hang with someone like Carnalosi, who has already fought a, a fighter like Angela Hill, who, when it comes to cardio, striking, all that fun stuff, it, it's the cream of the crop. So let's go with Ariane as a favorite here. I think that minus 140 makes sense. I do think that both fighters have an absolutely big chance to win this fight. It just comes down to game plan and who executes well. And obviously who makes the least amount of mistakes because the ground is going to be a factor here. But I think the feet is the X factor. Whoever comes out better and more consistent on the feet for this fight, I think is going to end up winning that close decision if it gets there. So let's go with Ariane as a minus 140 with you know a small grain of salt because who knows what this looks like and yeah so you know Carnalosi comes in as a plus 165 dog the line has moved down to about that plus 140 to plus 150 range loopy comes in as a minus 210 dog but that gets bet all the way down to minus 170 to minus 180 i like this fight i think it's more of a uh you know one to watch and have fun with i think if you were picking a spot from a betting perspective very difficult to, to see where this fight might go. I know that there's a lot of people probably on Loopy for this one, which makes a lot of sense given the line. But again, that line movement tells you that there's something about Ariane that people like as well. And we're still in that territory of sharp betting. So when you're seeing that early action, the line's moving, it's the guys who know what they're doing that are moving it. So keep an eye on that fight. I think it's a really fun fight to get things going. And, and I'm excited for it.